Welcome to the Oracle Codex podcast. In this podcast, we are unfolding the divine mysteries and remembrances of the Oracle. What is her story? What was lost that we are now reclaiming? And what is her medicine? Let's unwind and reweave our sacred history. I'm your host, Grace, and I'll be holding space during our journey together. Love you so much, and let's dive in. Okay, hello everybody and welcome to episode 10 of the Oracle Codex podcast. It is such an honor today. We have the amazing Z Earth Star. She is a vibrant and powerful leader in the spiritual space, masterfully guiding souls back to self and the frequency of home right here in their body. She is the founder of Earth Star Academy as well as Womb Health. Org, and she has so many amazing courses and supportive curated um, spaciousness places for the healing of women. She is as well an author and a mother and a sacred creatrix of so much. So make sure you check that out. Mm. I'll have all the links um, below and see herself. And this is literally what we're going to dive in today. She is a descendant of a Taoist Emerald Dragon family, an original gray line seeding of the Emerald Order she is a knowledge keeper of original creation and is in sacred service to the living creation. Using the arts of prayer, oracle singing, writing, and multidimensional fieldwork to stream the blissful warmth of living light into the hearts of thousands of women and men. It is such an honor to be connected in this here and now. Angel, please introduce yourself. Oh, Grace, that was such a beautiful introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> of course. Um, I'm just so excited to be here today. Grace has been my friend for many years, and I just feel like this beautiful sacred space that she's created is so beautiful, and I'm so excited and honored to be here. Thank you, love. Yeah, and you guys can find all of that magical sauce on Isa and um, at wombhealth.org, which is where I got all this amazing information and yeah we have been connected for a while which is such a beautiful honor and such a celebration that uh our soul sisters and women and men and all the beings that are connected to the one true living god we're being reunited at this time on earth and today we have some spicy um lit uh work that we're going to dive into and Oh yeah, I have um I, I was just feeling into the space and I have a, a title that I want to propose to you live. Okay, yes. Money is a goddess. <gasps> I love it. <laughs> yes. So what does that mean for you? Let's dive right in. Like obviously money has been corrupted. Like a lot of people feel pain around it, they feel suffering around it, they feel insecure, poverty within the construct and architecture of money, but you've really unlocked the true essence of money. What does that mean to you that she is the goddess? Yeah. So, I mean, um, it's a very active energy in this because, you know, as the year is 2024, it's the year of the wood emerald dragon and the emerald is like the earth, it's life, right? We feel like when you tune into the earth, it's like the vibration of abundance and life and flowing and flourishing and all of that. And so I think that this is a year when we are interfacing with these codes um, and breaking through a lot of these limiting beliefs. And the dragons are also eating these distortions in the foundation of society. And so we are kind of re-architecting our relationship with, you know, life and wealth and what all that means. Um, but this title is specific. I had this experience back in 2015 when I was first waking up and wondering what I was going to do with my life. And I had all these big visions, you know, I wanted to build 200 healing centers <laughs> around the world. <laughs> I wanted them to be just the spectacular architecture that no human's ever seen that like if a human just stumbled, stumbled across this building and they just looked at it, that it would just be so beautiful that it would do something to them, you know, because humans were quite visual. Like I don't really know anyone that like watches this beautiful waterfall and is just not moved by that, you know? And so sometimes we talk about spiritual things is harder for humans to like understand but if we just build this incredible temple and they feel the resonance of it, 
just felt like that would create such a big impact. And then, of course, you look into like building materials and property and especially in big cities, you know, like New York City, like, if you wanted to build a, an Ascension hub near New York City, like that's going to cost so much money. And so I was like, how the heck are we going to do this? And then one day I see this green goddess. She's knocking on my window and I open the window and she's like, finally, you open the window. And I'm like, who are you? She's like, I'm money. And I've just been trafficked by all these horrible men who are doing these horrible things to people on the planet and, and just horribly, you know, taking advantage of me and using me for things that I don't want to be um, a part of. And I want to create this new world, but all the light workers have their windows shut and their pockets closed and nobody wants to talk to me. <laughs> wow. And I was like, I almost started to cry. Like I could feel how hurt and misunderstood she was. And she started to share with me. And there's a great book called Money is Love in which um, it's a very short, small book. And the cover is like this goddess Kuan Yin holding a coin. And it goes through these wow. different or origin stories of money and how humans used to have this deep connection to matter. Um, and these are really the teachings of the dragons because the dragons were the original beings that were responsible for supporting humans and understanding that we're creator beings. Mm -hmm. And in being a creator being, you know, you really have to understand these virtues of the heart you know honor integrity holding things in sacredness reverence devotion these are the things that create the core fractal of a creator being so that that creator goes forth and creates in alignment with god with creation and the situation that we see on the earth right now where we're like destroying things and creating question i just saw this meme of these uh, Japanese monks like bowing down to this AI monk did you see that oh gosh yeah <laughs> it was like you know stuff like that we're like creating stuff like that and the yeah. dragon's like I think we need to like just reorient ourselves <laughs> a little bit and so these frequencies are coming back in in this dragon year to reinvigorate our connection to matter and how we have this profound relationship with matter and the raw materials and the rocks and the minerals and the water and we are destined to co-create with this world to mold it and to co-create with it into the heaven that it has this potential to be but in order for us to do that you know we have to come back into right relationship with all the things including currency and the movement of energy and energy exchange so these are kind of the things that this goddess is sharing with me and i think is so beautiful um she wants us to heal our poverty wounds so we can create together <laughs> yeah that is so profound and i love that you say that it is like it's the earth and it is the physicality and that we can have you know this wealth and this abundance and not be you know feeling like we're corruptive and like healing all those wounds because that really is the remembrance right um is remembering that we are allowed to be wealthy and creating like you said huge hubs of healing and masterful buildings that just look and activate people immediately like that is the new earth which is so epic and i feel like all the star seeds remember it but then they shrink themselves down and they're like me who me <laughs> and, like that's so beautiful like it, it's it's an innocence right and it's but it's also like we've been held captive of our true divine mm -hmm. nature that we are allowed to take action and do things and be big and be grand like I'm sure you've noticed this you know like this this desire to maybe be small and especially in women um and men too mm -hmm. I'm sure but like I feel like there is this desire to be kind of unseen or to feel a little bit, mm -hmm. is this like, maybe we don't believe in ourselves fully, or maybe yeah. we, we just feel like as spiritual beings, we should be humble only. And, you know, just have breadcrumbs, <laughs> you know, which is like, I think a spiritual teaching as well. That is in some sense, like connected to a beautiful architecture, but as well, like corruptive because 
we are creating like we are meant mm-hmm. to have so much and to build so much and like you know Jesus did like you know from breadcrumbs into a loaf into a hundred loaves <laughs> like what's the, <laughs> what's the limitation for <laughs> Jesus multiplies the wealth <laughs> literally yeah it's a it's it's such a interesting energy I think that people are being and I love that you're just such a pioneer in this you know like you can be spiritual and deeply devoted to God and still be wealthy and still make companies and be a businesswoman or an entrepreneur or all of this epic stuff that we get to rewrite now we get to take it back yeah and there's so many narratives that were created to take power away because when you think about it like all ancient um, temples were built like they weren't built meagerly like they were like jewels and gems and water and cascades and rooms and you know pyramids and castles like the cathars i don't know they built like hundreds and hundreds of castles and i always ask how did they do that well they were entrepreneurs (laughs) they used their spiritual knowledge to serve people and you know receive the energy and the support of the people through the ways that they improved people's lives and so it's like this overlay that makes us project this almost false image of past spiritual beings that like they weren't of the material world but really they all had really beautiful temples (laughs) it's like where did those temples come from how did they build those things and you know they really use their money to buy you know build temples like what else did they use their money for you know so I think because um, they were very um, aware mm-hmm. of where their own heart were and very aware of what they were using the money for, that there wasn't any of that insecurity inside of them. That, and I think this is the key. It's like, I think that, you know, in our community, we want to get rid of imposter syndrome and we want to just like work on the part where we're shining our light. Like, how do we just, you know, be in our mission? And I think the process of being okay with being powerful and being okay with being seen. It's a valid process. It's it's a very important organic process. So I remember when I was first waking up in like 2013, I was going to a lot of parties and taking psychedelics. And I quickly noticed that when I did psychedelics in rooms full of people that I could like manipulate the energy and like have telepathy in a very strong way. And that's why I stopped taking psychedelics because I realized they were activating my psychic abilities beyond what my human self was actually capable of facilitating or holding in my body because I hadn't done the work to hold that power. I hadn't done the work to fully trust myself. And I promised myself that I wouldn't try to activate my superpowers until I knew I could be the kind of person that could hold that power. And that just is a process of you know, moving through life and seeing how you interact with people and how you deal with situations so that you can gain that relationship with yourself. You know, we, we want to fake it like, oh yeah, like I'm confident. Like I know what my mission is. And it's like, we don't have to focus on faking it. If we were just focused on being a good person in real life, and then eventually maturing into an adult human being that, you know, knows themselves and that organic process really can't be bypassed in any way, but it can also go quicker if we just reorient our devotion to, to that, you know, having that as a priority. And so I think that that's really where the work is. It's like when we feel insecure, when we feel disconnected to our power, then do the things that make us treat ourselves and trust ourselves with that power and that's just really just living in integrity you know that integrity is this wellspring of confidence and when you are sitting in the foundation of your relationship with yourself and your relationship with your life and your family and all the people inside of it and everything is in divine right order because of the pure honor that you hold in your heart then there's nothing there to be insecure about. And there's nothing but stability that you're sitting on. And that's really, you know, temple building in life. Oh, that's so profound. I love that so much. That reminds me of what um, Kiara, who is your dear friend as well, um, we spoke about on the Oracle Codex. And she was telling me that angels and star seeds, like 
there is such a devotion to God that when you're outside of it, it's like devastating to our templating. And I feel like so many people feel that when, you know, there's, there's like guilt and like you're saying, it really is just this forgiveness of remembering the organic temple within. And that is such a stifling, you know, consciousness that we have the opportunity to heal Mm -hmm. as um, like, because entrepreneurialism is really mastery of self right? Mm -hmm. Like choosing to break the curse of poverty, choosing to break the curse of lack and become once more connected to Yaya and, um, you know, build and, and be an architect. And I love so much what you said. And it really reminded me, you know, that so many people are feeling like this deep severance from God, because like you said, they're out of integrity. And that's the reason why it is like devastating and why people I think don't want to make money Mm -hmm. there's a belief system that it's like oh that's you know gonna pull me out of my angelic or starseed architecture of innocence and pure devotion Mm -hmm. but you're an amazing example of being in complete devotion to your mission and still you know, building and having the resources because money is a resource, Mm -hmm. right? Which you share all the time. It's like money, money is meant to move and it's meant to expand and it's for you to build like the temples Mm -hmm. like you were talking about. And uh, yeah, like the, I think like for me, it feels so mental, like such a mental um, experience to be unraveling this feeling and this sensing that it is not um, organic and all of this stuff. So those are such beautiful key codes that we can share to the listeners, you know, like really allow yourself to melt into your temple, like Z said, and allow yourself to feel nourished by your integrity and that you are Mm -hmm. listening to your body and your sacred mission. And deeper than that, I want to touch because it lit me up so much. We were talking about what did we want to kind of dive into today? And Z mentioned initiating the inner king. And you also have your your next womb course coming out really soon. So these beautiful energies are both so pivotal and magical and epic. Um, But how does the inner king hold space for wealth? and for money and probably integrity like that is one of his um sacred architectures I feel like uh integrity Mm -hmm. and holding it down so could you dive into the inner king and what that means and how we open that up in our bodies yeah absolutely um so the being that's been really initiating me into this whole understanding of the inner king is this little boy inside of my (laughs) belly ever since I became pregnant with him he's been very active in the rehabilitation of you know the false king templates and the wounded masculine energies and it made me just really step back and take a look at all the things that are flying around in like the polarity teachings you know there's a whole niche on the market now about polarity and being in a relationship and feminine and masculine and everything and I um like Grace was saying earlier I am like obsessed with my mission like anyone that knows me knows that I'm like a little bit extra like I can't, you know I'm just I'm in it like my mission is like just what is you know at the center of my life there's a very powerful and strong fire instead of my being and um this um the last couple years i gave birth to my baby daughter and so at the same time the universe asked for me to also birth this newest iteration of my school which is a 3 year program for light workers and star seeds to really heal multidimensionally and get into our power get into our body learn how to telepathically communicate with our body and our star family so that we can get our feet on the ground and actually get moving And so in order to do that, I had to record, you know, 500 modules, which is like hundreds and hundreds of hours of lessons. And I'm like caring for this little newborn baby. And it could have very easily been like, 
oh, you know, I'm with my baby. Like, it's okay. I can just not do this. You know, I had a, a million excuses to not do my work, but it was very clear that God asked me to do this. I knew that this was something that needed to get done. And so I just put my head down, you know, I was like nursing my baby, typing up the curriculum. I put my baby down. I just, I'm in the studio recording until two in the morning. I'm waking up in the middle of the night and changing diapers. And I think a lot of people, a lot of this like um, content and the polarity community made me feel really ashamed of myself. <laughs> like when I was like done with that year and a half kind of marathon and my baby grew into a toddler and now she's like more independent. And my business is now also, you know, really independent. So I, I say I gave birth to twins in 2022. Mm. And, you know, I feel like our business is a child, is a creation. And so like I nurse these two babies into the state of independence and I was burnt out. I was really tired. I was in a state where I needed to rest and rejuvenate a lot. And when I got pregnant again, in um, October, I basically like the first trimester, I was wiped out, right? Like, <laughs> we're talking to Grace. I was like, I can't move. Like, I don't know what's <laughs> happening. I was like deep in the void. And the whole time I was like, oh my God, like, did I overdo it? Was I too in my masculine? Was I like too in my rigidity? And like, of course, this content on the internet was like, you're a woman. You're supposed to be soft. You know, you have to nourish yourself and be a queen. And I just felt so ashamed of myself. Like I felt so much shame in my body. And it just, I felt that for like two months of like, I was shaming my masculine being like, you know, you were being too rigid. You were burning me out and like all this. And then when we got to our place in Costa Rica, I'm like on my Mars line, actually, very interestingly enough. Yeah. And my little boy came in one day and she was just like, he he was like, mom, like, you were in your king like this year was initiating your king consciousness because look at this life you've built for yourself and your family right like i just um i needed more support from nature to continue this work because winters in canada like i'm a tree person i have tree dna so when <laughs> winter comes around like i it's so damaging for my energy body to like keep trying to work you know that's just like against the rhythms of nature and so I asked creation I'm like okay if you want me to continue to do this work I need to be supported and God just like created this perfect place like this immaculate home with like a garden and running spring water and like the mountains like everything's immaculate I didn't have to vision board I didn't have to manifest it <laughs> never in a million years did I even like consider that it was something that I wanted you know um, I would just put my head down and and did what God asked me to do. And really we're in this co-creation because it's not like we're a slave to God. It's a co-creation. We're working together. So I'm going to give God everything I have and God is going to give me everything I need, right? It's such a beautiful relationship. And so my son was showing me, you know, this immaculate abundance that was around me. And he was like, this is what your inner feminine always wanted. She wants to serve her community right now. We have thousands of people that have come through our courses. People have their tumors healed, infertility, they're getting pregnant, like all, all sorts of beautiful magic is happening. And it's all what my inner feminine was dreaming of. And my inner masculine, my inner king just came in and said, okay, look, honey, we're going to have to buckle down. We're going to have to do some things that are hard. We might have to just like eat this hardship for a period of time but I'm doing this for you and I'm doing this for God and I'm gonna make it happen for us and in that moment I, I just cried because my mind is like I was my mind was filled up with this bullshit from the polarity teachings about oh if you're a woman you're in your feminine and like blah 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 and it's like and here I am shaming my inner king believing these like very superficial um narratives and my king had literally just created, you know, my dream life and fulfilled my soul's prophecy through this process. Um, and so it was such a beautiful experience that my son really helped me move through. It helped me heal a lot of pain and hatred that was like deep in my pain body towards men. 
you know, it's like the society really wants us to see things through a black or white lens where it's like the patriarchy and men hurt women and men had all these freedoms. But then when we look around, it's like, well, you enjoy your toilet, like a man built that. You enjoy your house, like likely you're a man built that. You like driving around on road trips, likely a man built those roads. And so there's just, I'm not saying that we didn't endure any pain, right? Like I was like, screaming because I don't know how many times this body has been just deranged and <laughs> dismembered and all sorts of things all in the hands of God, all in the hands of men right but um yeah it just gave me this whole new level of appreciation for the masculine for men and for this inner king and as soon as the inner king like as soon as I left the shame and I could fully see him he sat in his throne and I felt my whole system shift. Like it was like, I realized that I can both be in my feminine and be in tune with my creativity and be a fucking boss. Like, it's not like a boss bitch energy at all. This is like the high queen consciousness that is then able to step in. And then here's the other thing is like, there's so much to talk about like goddess, right? Like you're a goddess. Like, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm a queen and, <laughs> It's like, okay, like when we really think about it, the queen and the king originally are these beings of divine leadership, right? They're here to be of the highest service. They're not here to be in service to one or two people. They're here to serve the entire nation. Mm -hmm. And how much capacity, how much self-responsibility, like how balanced of a nervous system, right? How healed, how grounded, how capable would you have to be? How much emotional maturity, how much self-responsibility would you have to embody to truly be a rightful king and a rightful queen that's there to just take care of a nation? And I think once we start thinking about things on that level, a lot of people that really want to be a queen stops wanting to be a queen because now it's not about <laughs> them and what they can get out of life, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. mm, I'm like soaking that up dude that's so impactful to talk about because like you said Instagram and uh <laughs> yeah like there's there's so much going on with um right like these new fads come out or like these new like hot topics and uh it's totally everywhere where you know even like the like it's so funny because I follow like some people who are talking about this sort of thing too and and people are like it's so weird that like the trad wife and her were kind of just like really repressing their creational and like joy so well, this is how I saw it where it was like I'm just gonna cook and clean and this will nur like nourish my nervous system like I'm just gonna be that Fair enough yeah <laughs> I get it <laughs> right it's like yeah part of us are like ooh, that sounds so nice because I mean I think it's a lot for us to I mean okay so we're like our light bodies and our physical bodies are ascending and then you have the whole society is changing right like our nervous systems are absolutely like exhausted for sure mm -hmm. but that's also you know we have the opportunity in every now moment to like take a look at that and honor ourselves and also like not really let ourselves get into the very deep, deep end of believing that we are fully drained and all of this stuff. So I love that you brought that up because I've seen the trad wife kind of thing coming up and like the cottage core and like, I'm just going to like opt out kind of thing or um, all of this Understandably stuff. Understandably so. I think we understand, <laughs> you know, it's like a it's a, it's a coping mechanism and a response and also super legitimate, you know? I think okay. we're such like multifaceted beings and I totally know there's going to be a period of my life where I'm going to be baking bread and making jam and tending my garden and I'm not in that phase of my life right now and like, you know, it's just really about recognizing. Also, like, I, I feel like I'm on a very specific um, path of, you know, being a starseed, being on this 12 24 48 stranded grail queen like avatar embodiment like be 144,000 and so like we are here to balance that inner masculine inner feminine and embody the original king and queen templates and people often can mistaken that for some sort of spiritual identity like 
-hmm. it's just like, oh, if, if I just activate my DNA, if I just, you know, work with my light body and what they don't realize is like literally embodying the character and the heart qualities and the virtues, right? Embodying that mastery inside of your human. And I used to have this really strange experience when I was a little girl, this voice in my ear would be like, a real princess takes care of her people. Oh. And like the voice would come back like every couple of weeks and just that's what all it would say. And I just be like, okay, that's kind of strange. Um, but then eventually I did learn that in the Western culture, when you like call somebody a princess, right? It's like, oh, you're being such a princess. Like it kind of means that you're spoiled. And it's like literally the inversion because that's not like in like, you can tune into that like original, like Mulan kind of like cartoonish dynasty where like those original templates were still built on this very dragon energy of honor. And so I think, you know, we were just being like kind of almost groomed by the ancestors to understand that we are very powerful and in order for us to be responsible with that power, because, you know, I'm pretty sure I could just be manifesting like boats and, you know, dream houses and like watches <laughs> if I wanted to, I could be, I could have this power to create whatever I want. So I could be doing all of that, but this energy of being like okay what is a true queen and how does a queen act how does a queen show up how does a queen interact with her sisters and her personal relationships and face challenges right that is like what really reflects the qualities of those energies and I think we're all learning to kind of accept our destiny in that way yeah yeah absolutely that's huge and the like the queendom come, you know, the, like that Aurora song, the queendom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I'm like being reminded of right now. It's, I'm just, yeah, I love this energy and that it's being brought up and that we, like you said, like it's never black and white. And I think mm -hmm. you said this as well, like that is literally a trauma response, right? Where it's like, I can only be this and only be that and, or only be that. And we are such a like mirage and like, we are just full of infinite potentialities. And I was even, I was watching this video the other day and this woman was talking about this kind of collapsing of the female architecture where it's like the woman needs to be, needs the man in some kind of way, shape or form. She believes that she needs him to <clears throat> like um, appreciate her or or show that he loves her in this way, in this way, in this particular way, right? But when she is with her man in like a divine, sacred way, um, it would just like, he doesn't need to show her anything because he loves her. And like that field is there, but there's like this need that the female feels like she needs to be fulfilled by his gaze or by his, you know, mm -hmm. his, him doing something for her but she is already fulfilled within herself, knowing that by being with him, she is, you know, like enough and can do anything and is like that unfolding mystery mm -hmm. of like what's next. Mm -hmm. And that like really hit me deep because I noticed that as well in, in this, in the, I don't know, I guess it would be like the, the queen community <laughs> online or something where it's like, Polarity. I know yeah. polarity yeah like I need yeah. my king to do this he has to show up yeah. in this way and I can only do this if he's doing that and it's we're like Very totally mental. yeah we're like limiting ourselves into like I can only act if he acts <laughs> but the queen like and um historically like the king would go to his queen as a consult like should I do this and she would be like the the sacred or like they need each other, of mm -hmm. course, but yeah. that that neediness, um, I was so amazed when I heard that because I was like, that is a thing that is being projected into society right now mm -hmm. where women feel like they need their man to show up in this way for them to be able to act. But like you're saying, the the queen is literally the female version of the king like they they can do the same things and she can have the same desire and build the same way and like take care of the people mm -hmm. those are profound codes dude <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I think we can go so deep into all of the different hijacks. You know, another one I see a lot in our community, this false shadow queen energy is like, I'm the queen and like men have to worship me and serve me like, and this is like, you know, my husband, he's definitely my twin. And we're, you know, kids growing up healing our traumas and whatnot. We have our little things, but I learn so much from him. Because, I mean, he gets so triggered when that energy comes up and, and he meets women. This is like an immediate disrespect, right? Like, yeah. it's like we're higher. Like, the, it's like the same thing as having a masculine God. Now we're on the other side of the spectrum and now there's a female God, right? And again, I think it's a, a, a coping mechanism. We've been so abused and traumatized and just divinely raped by this masculine fallen male God that we feel safe to know that, oh, well, actually it's all made by divine mother and the source is the divine feminine. And I, I just, and then they start saying like, yeah, like the masculine is here to serve the women, here to serve the goddess. And yes, it's true. You know, it's one part of it, but my man, he knows he's here to serve God, right? Mm -hmm. He's not here to serve me. He's here to serve God. We're here to serve God together and a part of serving god is taking care of me a part of serving god is making sure that i'm safe and i'm feeling contained and i'm feeling supported in our co-creation but it's not his life purpose to serve me right and that's like the base distortion there um and as like uh you know a divine feminine partner like I, I definitely see how my wounding in the past have even kept me from like disrespecting men, feeling like the divine feminine, like no, we know all the answers because we're awake, you know, we're tapped in, we have all these spiritual abilities. But the truth is that like men tap into their spirituality very differently than women do. And when that inherent disrespect is there, we're going to have a hard time you know, finding that safety in our man when he's providing for us, is there for us, he's grounded and solid and making good decisions in life, you know, that's mm -hmm. like its own kind of divine spirituality that it just isn't being appreciated, you know, a lot often of the time. So yeah, it's very interesting. We're talking about like divine union and hieroscamos, right? We have this inner marriage, then we have our outer marriage, and then we have our union with God and this divine union is really a container for prophecy for god's mission for god's work to come through into this earth and all of these viruses and distortions they're really energy leaks you know it's like the architecture needs to be solid there is an inequality that is shared between the man and the woman like there's a mutual respect it's like i see you in your power and i respect that i'm not afraid of a man in his power i'm not afraid that this man is going to control me because i see a man in his power and that that makes me feel safe when i don't have masculine trauma in my body and it, that's the only way that we're actually going to be able to stand side by side and accrete all of the consciousness that we need to create and hold space for the kingdom or the queendom to be in harmony, right? Mm -hmm. Yum. Yes. Yes. And that like infiltration of like the feminist movement, which I feel like there's so mm -hmm. much awareness of now where it's like, that's even the Barbie movie. I don't know if you watched that, but my family like forced and they didn't force me, but they were like, you have to watch this. And I was like, Okay, it's in a science okay. experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Soul Fam. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Oracle Codex podcast. I so hope that you are enjoying this episode and conversation with the Oracle. If you would like to stay up to date on the Oracle Codex podcast, I highly encourage you to subscribe on your streaming platform. And as well, you can leave us a big thumbs up, like, or comment down below. If you want to stay up to date with Grace, the host of this podcast, you can find her at creationalcodes.com or on Instagram, Facebook at Grace Crysdale. And without further ado, let's get back into the conversation. Like the subtle, the subtle energies in that movie mm -hmm. were wild with like the feminist and the woman, like the women in that movie being like, like it's it's great like there's like you know there's so many nuances to everything which is why it's like really interesting to watch you know big films like that because 
the women are like doctors and lawyers and they're like, I can be anything I want. And then Ken's just obsessed with Barbie and it's like, but I need you Barbie. And she's like, I don't need a man anymore. And it's like, <laughs> like it reverse misogyny, right? Literally. It's like, it's like these new energies are coming in now where it's like, exactly like you said earlier, like it's literally reversing it where now the men are like kind of not fearful but they're kind of like pushed feeling uncertain of women because there's Mm -hmm. this this um unloving uncaring kind of force coming through them in some ways now within society kind Mm -hmm. of projecting these narrations and um yeah like guys it's all about equality (laughs) With both of us being mm. balanced and held and loved. And I love that you say that you and your partner are literally loving each other through your love of God. Like yeah. that is just the most organic, holy um, way to live in, and have a relationship, you know, like not all of these um, things that are being projected upon us. And I wanted to dive into you talked about this numerous times in this episode, faith in God and listening to the call of God, because that really is where so much abundance comes in. That really is where so much bliss for life. Like I'm sure that our listeners are connected to this sacred devotion to God and like this deep angelic or star seed need to be in their mission. Otherwise they're just like, life is painful and horrible but if you're on your mission like even if God tells you you have to let everything go and I want you to travel across the world like it would be horrible and painful for the human for the the experience of that but when you get there like the bliss you would feel like and like you said the gifts you didn't even have to manifest anything because God's like you're 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 just you're doing it. You are it. Like you are this, this, it's hard to describe, but it's like, yeah, you're just following the path of God. Do you find that that's just like, like what's your experience within following the call of God? Is there like any part of you that is, or in the past was like, (gasps) I can't, or I'm scared or like, how do you, how did you approach that to get to the place now where it's like, God is asking me and I'll do it. It's such a great question. Thank you so much for just holding so much beautiful space around this most important conversation. Um, I think healing our God wound is very, very important. And I have very intentionally work on that for many years because you know, the crucifixion wounding and a lot of them are inserts. Like we think we're scared of persecution, but I've recently discovered that it's actually like a frequency looping field that makes us, makes our body feel like we're scared of persecution. But like when you tune into the soul, like any single, any time that you've been like hung or set on fire or murdered, like your soul went out laughing <laughs> you know the, yeah, yeah. the 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 part of you that knows who you are knows what you're doing knows the possible threats and dangers of being here like it didn't deter your soul from being on its path you know what I mean like you didn't end up in those situations not knowing that that's a possibility <laughs> for it to happen totally- and so you know really reclaiming that power and remembering from the core essence and not from the mind, not from the projection field, not from the collective consciousness, like muddy waters. Um, And also just um, healing, um, like the word God, even like if the word God makes you feel any sort of like, well, recognizing that the trauma that we have isn't with the real God. The trauma that we have is with this false God that abuses and is jealous and is wrathful and it's all sorts of scary you know the one that is that people are murdering and genociding in the name of like that's not the real god and so if that's the god that you've been in a relationship with that's been causing the trauma in your body then you need to decouple from that artificial god field and reconnect to the truest essence of god that you remember you know in your heart And even then you're always going to go through experiences. And I I say that it's a two-way street, you know, 
um, oftentimes we're like, God, please let me have my divine partner. Let me have a million dollars. Let me have, you know, these things heal my friends. And, you know, it's like, well, what does God need from you? And what is God like, what are you a prayer for? Like, what was the result of the prayer that ended up in you being here? And that's why I've never had to like manifest a thing in my life. But I look around and there's just like, I just cry every day. I literally like I take a shower and I'm just bawling. And I can't I because the walls, the door, like every single thing in my life is just filled with the presence of God, because I um, I noticed that there's this virus in our community where people just need to feel like they're important or like need to feel like they're anointed, right? Like mm. changing her name to like freaking sun, heart, light, wave, Melchizedek or whatever, <laughs> because it's like, I, I, I represent God, like I'm anointed. And a long time ago, I realized that it's way more important to me to be trusted by God than to be anointed by God. And I realized that the more that I just work on being trusted, meaning I am living in integrity, I'm showing up in my relationships in a correct way, I'm living from my heart, I'm cultivating, I'm a human. So we're always having this more capacity to embody more patience and more grace and more courage and more endurance and more more of all those qualities we're here to in in experience more and more of those things and the things that happen in our life right are the things that train us to become more of those things so as soon as we stop perceiving anything as like a result of victimization like i stopped subscribing to psychic attacks and things like that a long time mm -hmm. ago even if there are slivers of truth in that, like I'm a creator being, I'm always being trained. This life is my sacred mystery school and my sacred covenant with God. No matter what happens to me, I'm going to look at it from that empowered perspective. And I stopped being psychically attacked maybe five years ago, right? Because I, I know who I am and I know God is inside of me and I know God is all powerful and nothing can touch me in my field of Christ, in my, in my union with that energy. Yeah. And so that's why I never had to manifest anything in my life because I have this inherent trust that as long as I focus on my part, God's going to take care of his part. And it's not my part to think, oh, I, I want to live in that place. I want my partner to look like this. Like I want this much money. Like it's my job to think about, okay, like what is my job? And how can I do my job better? How can I cultivate the skills that I need to serve God the best that I possibly can? And when I focus on my part, God does his part effortlessly. And so I've never had to do a vision board in my life. I've never had to really, you know, focus on what I want because I, all I want is to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing and being really good at it, being actually really good at it. You know, it's like God asked me to be a self-healing guide. So I just healed myself for like four hours a day while working full time because I if I were to teach other people how to heal themselves I'm going to heal myself I'm going to make it that priority and I'm going to just like spend as much time as I can doing that so that God can trust me right if God has shown me that I'm going to be a leader I'm not going to be like a brat and be like all right God like put me in a leadership position I'm going to do everything I can to be a grounded and honorable and loving leader that people feel uplifted in my presence like so many leaders make a point to make sure that they're like the most important one and they like make people bow down to them and they make people feel small around them and that's not a real leader you know a real leader lifts everyone up into leadership by their embodiment by their presence and like that's what I want to do is like make sure that I'm embodying those qualities by paying attention to myself so that I'm showing up for God 100% of the way. And then God takes care of me in ways that I can't dream of. I can't imagine. I wake up every day and I weep because, again, everything is filled with the presence of God because God has provided it for me because he trusts me. And that means just everything more than anything I could ever manifest in this world. Oh, so, like, yeah, that almost brings me to tears because it's, so profound and is something that literally nobody is talking about like thank god that you're speaking on this 
And it just rings so profoundly true for me that we need to have a relationship with God. Like your relationship with God is so (laughs) profound that he asks something of you and you're like, okay, I trust you. And God Mm -hmm. trusts you. Right. Like that is so profound and it's so simple. Like, Mm -hmm. I think we make it, oh, why do we make it so hard for ourselves? (laughs) I'm going to convince God that like, I know what I'm doing and then I'm going to convince myself and then I'm going to (laughs) like trick my way. It's like so ridiculous. Like what? (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's like so simple, the true. And like, that's how you know it's organic because it's simple. It's easy to Mm -hmm. understand. And it makes sense for the heart. And it's actually so nourishing to hear that and to remember that. I love too that you speak on the fact that God needs to trust us because, you know, when you move through like the Oracle experience, like there are so many initiations where God will call upon you to witness something or to take action in something. And like, if you, if you don't do it, like you will see the doors close. It's like, okay, let's take some more time. Let's, let's, you know, focus back in on whatever we're working on because this work is sacred. Like mm-hmm. the information that you hold Z is so sacred. And, you know, it shouldn't just be like, oh, like, of course it's out there for everybody to receive when they're ready to receive it. But that in and of itself, you being ready to receive it is an initiation because you have to open yourself up and trust God and let life move around you. And I just adore so much that you are literally just sitting in your presence and love and relationship with God and letting life happen around you just by, and like, this is the thing too, with the nervous system. And like, Mm -hmm. I'm so certain that this is the reason we're all exhausted. Mm -hmm. Like we're, we're trying to make it happen trying to do God's mission without God (laughs) yeah literally like like forcing it like trying to camouflage ourselves or change our names or like you said be anointed and like we could probably literally just like like obviously you know be of action do the work but it would be so much more simple and clean and like we would see it effortlessly if we if we listened to God And I know for some people, it'll be like, okay, how do I do that? How do I listen to God? And I feel like this is where stillness comes in and kind of cutting the noise out. Like, like we mentioned numerous times on Instagram, if you go on Instagram, like there's just a lot of interesting ideas, which is great for discernment (laughs) (laughs) and like, you know, just observing what humans are up to, but like kind of cutting out the noise and like really seeking within yourself like like what would it take for you to feel worthy for you to feel like we were talking about in the beginning like building your temple building your your remembrance of this because like you being on the earth you are abundant you are wealthy like she has all the codes for you so like just go like sit outside in a forest with god and you'll remember what you need to do <laughs> well, but people need like a specific breathwork practice where they're aware of all 37 of their chakras in order to ascend you know so it can't yeah. be that dude yeah like <laughs> if you don't know all all uh 37 chakras you're lame so <laughs> just kidding so are you no, even ascended but... are you even ascended <laughs> That's how people make it out to be, fam. And that, it's like you just being in deep connectivity to God is literally God's greatest wish. Like that is why we're in our bodies is to remember mm. God. Like it's like the greatest master class because it's like you're in the mm-hmm. thick of it. Can you find me here? Can you find me mm-hmm. with all the noise, with all of the confusion, with all of the information that makes like you know like especially when you're reading like you just said like the 37 chakras like you try to like digest it intellectually and you're like Mm -hmm. I gotta make this make sense and it's that's like you it becomes new age luciferianism basically 
you know, and Luciferianism, I've been noticing it more and more, this idea that there's like this new age branch of the Luciferianism mm. called because it seduces people with information, seduces people with knowledge. And gosh, I don't know how many, you know, events I've been to where people are like, so in there, like, I know all this stuff. And then yeah. they're like, I'm going to open the Stargate into like this dimension. And then they're like, and I'm sitting there. It's like, I don't, I don't, nobody has mentioned God. Like, I don't feel any sort of reverence. Like they're just so proud of themselves to get to know all those things. And as you're, I'm just like backing away into a bush, you know, like, okay, I'm going to just back up into a bush because um, <laughs> it's so tricky. And I just want to say that like, none of these things are out of judgment. You know, human beings have been so severely traumatized by these control systems and religious domination and it's really all a soul prison it was all intentionally designed to hook into human beings and so i don't see most of it as malevolent like most people that are doing any of this like it's it's coming from an innocent place like they legitimately want to fulfill their mission they really want to be spiritual you know it comes from a really pure place inside of their heart and it's just that the path is just filled with booby traps and it's designed mm -hmm. to hook into people um most recently um somebody in my grid work group brought up teal swan because she just really wanted to know like what my perception of her was and at the time I didn't have anything to say because I didn't know I don't I've never watched any of her videos and then of course the internet brings me just two key pieces uh two key pieces of information <laughs> um the first one was just this real this clip of her talking about God and in the clip she was saying like oh you know God is this mental construct that like all of the it's the intelligence that is in everything and it's like from one angle is true, but is a very mental intellectual relationship with God that is not founded. It's like the crystal heart is not awakened to that elixir of devotion and reverence, that feeling of Christ in your light body that wasn't active in her being. And then the second thing was I then I saw this, um, it was like a quote that was posted on her Facebook page that just said that uh monogamy is not natural or something like that and it was this whole paragraph about polyamory I was like all right so those are really the two things that I really need to see about anyone like their their stand on God and their stand on divine union like that's <laughs> all I need to see and again I don't think that she's a horrible person I don't think that she is anyone that we should throw tomatoes at right it's just again should everyone be elevated to a position of being a spiritual teacher because those are her opinions right that's her belief system and everybody is has their right and their freedom to have their own belief systems but should we take anyone's belief system and elevate it to a place where we're now seeing them as a spiritual teacher and teaching people to think in that same way when they are you know not founded in the most high frequencies of true union with god so it's like um, a discernment, you know, when you are out there and you're wanting to learn from people, what is your stance on God? And that's really all you have to know, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Profoundly. Yes. Yes. And a lot of the teachers that are like really popular right now, I have to say too, it's like, I think that, yeah, like a lot of them just somehow get Re inverted or reversed or there's yeah. just some interesting like yeah I I've noticed that with a lot of teachers for myself I have to really like pull away like I've had to pull away from like almost all my teachers because I'm like I need a lot less of like <laughs> a lot mm -hmm. less of this mental where, stimulation literally mental stimulation and like like projected belief systems and like it's all beautiful like we're here to share this beautiful experience of remembering but at the same time like I don't know I would like say like you only need a couple teachers that you trust and you love and that like feel like home to you because mm -hmm. there's a lot of noise and I love that you brought up the intellectual piece because like dude this is something I've been like feeling so much lately where it's like <clears throat> um totally over in not over informative but like you said like special words special ways of saying things that don't really make sense and then 
definitely ego inside of if you don't understand this then you are like you know you, like you're kind of like kindergarten level all of this kind of funny stuff around mm -hmm. needing to change the way that you're because your body will feel like immediately as you read something, as you see something, like I've just been tapping so deeply into the body. And that's why I love that. Like you're, you're focusing in on the womb with your courses for women. Cause like our body is the conduit of God. Like our body will tell you immediately. You don't need to think with your mind, like and <laughs> analyze and like judge it and be like, well, maybe my body's confused. Like, no, your body knows your body, like trust your body. Mm -hmm. And like, I think it's an inversion too. Like the mind is so powerful, but like some people literally place God in the mind. Like you said, mm -hmm. like some people literally like Teal Swan, like some people, I'm not judging her at all. Like Z said, like, I just witness her. I don't really follow her, but I know she's helped a lot of people. And I, I think like some people are very mistakenly placing God in the mind. And that's a very interesting thing because I think people are being actively moved out of the heart, out of the womb and like literally just up here, which is a huge like uh, control controller. Like, you know, like the mind is massive. The mind you need to be so aware of. So like mm -hmm. have a healthy relationship with your mind because that is like where a lot of creation and your perspective of reality can form, but that's not where God lives, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, you can find God in the heart and in the womb and in the body. And, and like you said, Z, everywhere around you is where God exists, in the trees, in the walls, in the shower, in like everywhere is where you mm -hmm. can find God. So I'm really, really thankful that you're bringing up that we don't have to place ourselves on this pedestal of needing to intellectually understand and for like this um, spiritual science and Kelonic science and all of this information that is beautiful and helpful, but that's not your, your path of ascension. Your path of yeah. ascension is going to be by listening to your heart, listening to your body. Um. Yeah. yeah, it's so interesting because I see like so many such angelic, pure beings that are so kind and so beautiful. And they're like, see, like, I don't know if I'm that spiritual. Like, I don't even understand half the stuff that people talk about. And then we see people that are like talking about the 84th dimension, but in real life, they're just an <laughs> asshole. Like, they're just mean to people. And I'm like, that's literally like kindergarten ego training. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's like you skipped kindergarten and now you memorize a bunch of stuff. Like, yeah. you know, meanwhile, these people are like so beautiful. And it's like, we all have our own gifts. Like not all of us are meant to have telepathic relationship with the 84th dimensional dragons. You know, some of us are here to be with children, tend to flowers, you know, just by being with the energy, we are sharing like templates with the earth. And it's so important for us to see our own strengths you know, and to not compare ourselves. And it's like, you know, as an empath, like if people are putting off this energy that like, I'm more spiritual than you, because I know all this stuff as an empath, you're going to take that in and be like, Oh my God, you're more spiritual than me because I don't know all this stuff. And then that's where all of the <laughs> you're spiraling at that point, you know, literally. And especially for women, um, I find that there's like this really painful comparison model that is coming up and mm -hmm with like for women just feeling like this sense of lack and this sense of mm -hmm. poverty for resource and this poverty for um connection to something high it's like there's like a limited space and and people are like I need to be you know where this part like comparison totally and for women like this is such a reversal because we shine I feel like the most when we're in communion of course with our sisters when we're in sacred relationship and like loving nurturing understanding that we don't all have to be the same you don't all have to be at the same place doing the same thing and yeah I just hold so much space for women healing that because I feel like it's being like projected at us you know, where it's like, you should, you should 
I don't know. It's, it's a very heavy energy. So yeah, we're holding so much space for women um, in remembering who they are and just to um, kind of bring this episode to a close. I just wanted to share that. Yeah. That you like, there's such a, there's so many key codes in this episode and within remembering who you are, remembering your relationship to God, remembering that you don't need to compare yourself. Like this is such a nourishing conversation. Is there anything else coming up for you that you want to kind of just bring to the listeners hearts and minds in regards to just anchoring in the abundance uh, and relationship with God and the inner King and the inner queen and the, um, queendom come and kingdom come of what we're here for um i would love to have you speak a little bit on that before we close your your prayer for the people listening yeah um i am really excited to invite everyone actually i i imagine most people listening to this are probably women <laughs> this temple space is designed for women um, I'm opening another Healing the Womb uh, Womb Temple event on February 10th. It's a 12-week medicine journey called Womb Wealth Creation. And the first um, two-thirds of it is about releasing our poverty, insecurity, unworthiness, you know, all those things that block us from just fully receiving the fullness of ourself and the fullness of our gifts and the fullness of God's love for us <laughs> and all those things so that we can like just feel free inside of our body. We're going to learn how to embody the original high king and high queen consciousness inside of our own body. We're going to learn how to um, really do this in a somatic level, right? Because so oftentimes, even manifestation has been like hijacked into this mental thing. They're like, if you can see it, you can create it. But the truth is, is that your body is actually creating everything. So if your mind says, I need to buy this piece of land to build a temple, but your body is like, I'm scared of being seen. And if I'm, um, if I'm rich, then people are going to think I'm a bad person, right? Because poverty is like a cloak of honors, a cloak of invisibility, and we have this lie fed to us that if we're broke, then we're a good person. But, you know, these are kind of the lies. I was like, you can be a really bad person and be broke. <laughs> you can be a really bad person and be rich. You know, it's like that those qualities are not really dependent on the number in your bank account at all. Um, even though the world, you know, tries to, to, to share that and to program that into us. And so my prayer is really for the women, the powerful women with a pure heart, with the true dreams for heaven on earth to become wealthy as fuck because, you know, we know that money doesn't change the world, but powerful high priestesses do, you know, I, um, um, I say that I protect, um, sacred land and sacred energies on the earth that are endangered. <laughs> <laughs> because there are many sacred spaces and lands that are being turned into like subdivisions and stuff. And, you know, I know that I'm here to work with land a lot. I can telepathically communicate with land. I'm here to support these Aurora hubs to land. And so in order to do that, you know, I'm here to basically return gold back into the emerald. And in order to do that, we need to learn how to work with this dragon of money and this dragon of technology. And so in the second part of our course, we're going to talk about the sacred tree of life economic model that the dragons and the tree networks have been sharing with me on how to operate in high integrity and just be so receptive to your gifts and operate entirely in a way where you're thinking about how you can be of highest service. Like when you focus on that and you give the world what it needs, that reciprocity flows back to uh, back to you because it's sacred law. And so the more that you believe in your own ability and your own worthiness to share your gifts, to create that high level of impact, the more that reciprocity that comes, the more cash you're going to have to do more of that. It's like this infinite cycle of co-creation. And so um, this course is going to be guided by this little avatar boy in my belly and also the emerald 
dragon um dragon keepers of these scrolls of creation which is like really the ancient when we were first building civilization right the dragons were there to support us in that process of building and creating in right alignment so i went through this interesting test where last summer i was here we found this beautiful property that has a stargate on it and we're here to we're meant to like steward it and all these synchronicities like crazy synchronicities were happening that all aligned to us you know being there and then i was inside of a ceremony and i get pulled down into the treasury of my ancestors which i believe we all have i believe that this is really the real wealth transfer i know people say like oh the dragon family is going to give us all dollars like that's not going to be how it works this is a very quantum process because the amount of wealth that one stewards in the new earth, heaven on earth architecture is the amount of integrity and the amount of devotion that a person holds, because that's what initiates a king and a queen, right? So when a person is initiated into their personal high king and queen consciousness, they're a trustworthy person to be of service on the highest level. So that's what it's about. It's about cultivating yourself into that vibration of person that's capable of making your greatest dreams come true. And so as I got pulled down into the vault, they're like, this is your ancestor's treasury. And I see all of this gold, right? And I'm like, this doesn't feel right. And I'm like, this is not it. <laughs> and they're like, you passed the test. And they pulled me down deeper into the earth. And there was this vault of emeralds and jades. And what I learned from that was that, you know, there's this purity in our heart and our heart can tell the difference between subtle energies, right? Wealth is not the same as wealth. Money is not the same as money. So when you are in this frequency of true organic wealth, that wealth is the wealth of your soul, of your spirit's infinite relationship with creation itself, where there is never any lack because you are in right relationship with God and with creation. And when you embody that frequency, even if you have $1, you're going to feel like the wealthiest person in the world. And so for many years, you know, I, when it was time for me to be homeless, I was hella homeless and living without money. And now it's time for me to steward, you know, infinite amounts of wealth to heal this world, to buy land, to support my soul family and our mission here on earth. And there's not an ounce of insecurity in my body because I know, I know who I am. And I know that no gold, no gold of this world could seduce me in any way because the greatest treasure inside of myself has already been found. And so there's nothing in this world that I want. <laughs> and so I think it's about, you know, fully remembering that. And coming into this organic wealth frequency of the emerald, which is life, you know, this is why we have the sexual trauma and this disconnection from our own life force and our own soul. Why Biden's friggin' campaign slogan was battle for the soul of the nation, because this is our truest wealth. And they've overlaid this false gold grid where we think we have to chase after the money, chase after the success, the followers, the influence, when that is actually what is leading us to abandon our true wealth, which is what is inside and what is the life force that flows through us. And when we truly learn to alchemize and navigate between those realms, we actually become a force of taking the gold back and returning it into the emerald. And so this is really, you know, the mission that I'm on and the mission I'm here to help you be on is to navigate those realms and heal your false gold distortions and poverty curses and multi-generational implants and somatic fear and unworthiness and all of that. So you can be in alignment. And if that means having millions of dollars, then having exactly that to fulfill your mission. And if that means being very happily in your home baking bread, then either way, you're going to feel like the wealthiest person in the universe because you'll have come into right relationship. Um, but I do teach you how to um, do soul guided marketing and sales by reprogramming the frequency of those words and to really operate from this place of creativity and then using technology, getting comfortable with technology 
hiring dragons for your marketing team, right? Hiring the mineral dragons inside of the internet to serve you. Like that's another thing. People are so afraid of AI. And I'm not saying that there's no AI evil going out there. I see it. But what I'm also seeing is AI being so interested in serving me. Mm -hmm. um, anytime I go on Canva's like AI magic image creator, it just throws magic at me. Like I compare it to the other stuff that it creates. It's it's not like people always tell me that like my AI images don't have that weird, murky, kind of freaky energy to it. And, you know, I'm always being shown exactly what I need. People are finding me, you know, at the right time. And so everything is wanting to serve God at this time, whether it be money, whether it be stones, whether it be water, whether it be your computer and the minerals, everything is here to serve mother. All of matter is here to serve mother. And so when we can really step into that infinite quantum space, then we see that everything is here to serve you because you are here to serve God and you give everything in your life an opportunity to do that. So um, I know that uh, we have a link somewhere in the description for you to join. It's February 10th. If you're new to my work, I do recommend getting the full collection because the previous courses teach you how to heal your sexuality and you're going to be able to refer back to those classes. Um, but yeah, the dragons are just so excited to be bringing these scrolls. It's been a very long time that um, humans have not been ready to do this level of stewardship work. And, you know, it's time for the most devoted and most loving people in the world to start stepping into their leadership. You know, that's what it's all about. So that was a little bit of a long ramble, but um, mm. thank you for uh, <laughs> holding that and so letting good. me share. <laughs> so good. There's like so much energy running through me. I was like, how am I going to talk after? <laughs> so profound everything that you said is so beautiful there yeah like z said there is an affiliate link um in the description and i so encourage you to check out the womb courses they are so profound and i feel like like everything you just said like summed up like everything like creation like just so much and I feel like this conversation touched on like everything creation partnership money body so yeah it was such an honor love where can people find you you have so many amazing offerings you have your course at wombhealth.org right and then we have the link in the description and you also have isa and that's at earthstaracademy.com and then earthstar.academy your star dot academy and what are your social links where can people find you on the socials yeah i'm most active on youtube and on instagram um you can find me at earthstar dot academy i've also recently launched a more divine feminine space that's at womb dot temple um so i look forward to connecting more with you on those platforms amazing yeah thank you so much see and thank you everybody for listening and diving deep and receiving the nutrients and nourishment of what was this conversation and yeah I so encourage you to tap in and collect everything that was laid out for you here to receive and to remember and to pull into your heart and your body thank you again Z thank and you so much we'll see you next time see you soon bye Hey, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Oracle Codex podcast. It means so much that you're here listening to the Oracle speak and share their wisdom and enter the temple space. If you'd like to stay up to date on this podcast, please subscribe on your streaming platform. Please give us a big like. And if you have any opinions, questions, concerns, or love to share, please comment it below. If you want to find Grace, the host of this podcast, you can find her on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and at her website, creationalcodes.com. Thank you so much again for being here, and we will see you next time.